Talking Law is the program. This is Radio 97. And if you have a question for Despina, and there are a few questions in the pipeline coming through, then you can get it to us just through the website, radio97.com.au. You'll find a couple of ways to get those questions to us. And it's been a happy to answer them for you on the radio. Just go to radio97.com.au. Thank you, Aino. Um, so just before the break there, we mentioned that Despina is dealing with you know, dealing with a very interesting case. And um, she let out some steam right before we jumped into this segment. But can you tell us, so this uh, particular contract uh, was signed over the weekend and it wasn't vetted to buy this home. Um, and there's some very strange conditions in there that you're obviously as a lawyer, you're not too stoked with. So can you tell oh, us Oh, it drives what me happened? crazy. I don't think I can stay calm when we talk about this <laughs> segment. It's <laughs> let it out. I don't, know that, breath, yeah. oh, I don't know how many times I tell clients don't sign unless we vet it first. It's mm -hmm. so important. It doesn't even take long. And typically these are um, uh, scenarios that arise on a weekend. And yes, we don't work on weekends, but it's the pressuring from the agent's to a large extent, where, oh, you've got to sign because I've got another three buyers and they're going to make yeah. another offer and you've got to sign, sign, sign. Um, and you've got to feel within your rights. No, look, I just need to uh, get it checked by my lawyer. Just give me the draft contract and let me get it checked first. And have this buyer done that, look, it, it would be such a different outcome. We are in a complete mess at the moment mm. and we now have to fix it. And it's going to cost the client more. So, and I don't even know if we can fix it because to fix it, I've got to get the uh, other party, the seller to agree to, agree to fix to it. it. So, and this is the whole point. You sign a contract, both parties sign, you're bound to it. So um, if something's wrong with it, in this case, substantially wrong, the other party doesn't have to agree to change anything, right? You you don't, um, can't, you've got really no influence over them other than to say, look, it's not really fair or reasonable. And they'll say, well, pretty much that's tough Too for bad. you and your yeah. client. They agreed to it. So the situation here is that we had a buyer sign up a contract wanting to buy this property to eventually move in, right, as their home. Now, the seller who lives in the property at the moment is, as I understand, elderly and frail um, and needed to stay in the property for a period of time after settlement. Sometimes that is negotiated, right? And that does have to be negotiated well with proper conditions drafted. So the conditions drafted in the contract to cater for this scenario were woeful, absolutely woeful. And the buyer is not protected at all. And the reason I say that is, there is, yes, three or four paragraphs, but it doesn't matter the number of paragraphs. It's the words used and it's the um, the ambiguity of these, uh, the drafting of these conditions and the uncertainty it gives to my client as a buyer. And, you know, the buyers allowed the seller to remain in possession after settlement. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and it's under a license. Okay. And the seller pays a license fee per week to the buyer. Okay. Sounds all good, doesn't it? The problem that we had is that the condition says, well, the seller can stay there until they're able to leave, until they're fit to leave. Mm. And what does that even what mean? That mean? I mean, there's mm. no um, certainty given to my person as a buyer. It just says until the seller's fit and able to. That's the actual wording in the contract. And look, whilst I might feel some sympathy or empathy for the seller if they're frail and they can't move, um, my client's in a real pickle to say it quite nicely, I suppose, um, mm. because the issue that my client has is that they're buying a property to move in as their home. Now, in Queensland, like other states, there are occupancy requirements and conditions for the purposes of stamp duty. And this is what I'm getting to. Some people may say, oh, well, good on the buyer. They're helping the seller out. Well, no, not really, because the buyers hurt themselves here. So in Queensland, um, there is occupancy requirements where you settle, right? And then you've got 12 months from the settlement date to move in and take occupancy. And then once you do that, whenever it is in that first 12 months, You've then got to stay there for 12 months. So yeah. those are generally the conditions to make sure you pay the concessional rate of duty. So a lesser amount of duty, not the full investment rate duty, which you don't want to pay if you're intending to move in. Move Why in, would you yeah. give the government extra money mm -hmm. when you don't have to, right? Mm -hmm. So 
That's fine. Now, um, here, they've allowed the seller to stay in occupation. So the buyer can't take occupation, right? And that might be okay, but here it's not because it says, well, until the seller's fit and able to. So yeah. when is What that? if it's 18 months from now? Could exactly. Be, yeah, could be six weeks, so, could be six months. Yeah, could be oh, more. Yeah. Exactly right. So if it's more than six months, the buyer's in big trouble. So in Queensland, we have certain public rulings to assist with explanation of the Duties Act. So not to get too technical, but these public rulings are really important. And being property lawyers, we're well aware of the public rulings. And the public rulings are issued by the commissioner to basically explain, well, what does this section mean in the Duties Act? And they're really good um, because they give practical examples. They go, example one, this scenario, example two, this scenario. So you can go through and sort of say, okay, where does my client fit? Now, there's an exception here where it says, okay, you don't have to take occupancy under those conditions as a buyer um, if the seller stays in occupation. And that's what we're talking about. The seller wants to stay in the property after settlement and the buyer can't move in. But this exception that they talk about in this public ruling only is for six months. So if this seller doesn't vacate at the end of the six months, the buyer will end up paying the investment rate of duty investment fees. to the commissioner. They will have to get it reassessed and will probably pay penalties and interest. Now, that's and a, a terrible situation to be in. And had we vetted it, we would have put in the condition to say only up to five months or six months maximum with other conditions about, well, if the seller doesn't move out, it's going to hurt the buyer. Um, and there'll be an arrangement about, well, who pays the extra duty? Because the buyer's being very generous here. He doesn't didn't have to give the seller this, um, you know, right to stay in the property. And if the seller can't get out in six months, the buyer's in a real mess in terms of her, in this case, her stamp duty obligations. Yeah. And so she could be up for thousands of thousands more dollars down the track. Well, that's what I was just about to ask. Yeah, yeah. And dollars, um, the investment fees compared to the homeowner type fees that he's wanting is uh, she's wanting. Is that yeah, like you said, is it thousands that he'd be up, she'd be up for? Or? Well, that's right. So mm. you might think, oh, the license fee might pay for that. Well, um, the license fee is also to compensate the buyer for not actually taking occupation. Is the buyer paying rent during this period themselves? What where's the buyer's costs before they can take occupation? It's not about just covering the extra duty. There might be a lot more involved um, for the buyer. I don't think they thought this through very well and they trusted that this condition was right, which I believe was done by the agent. And as I've said before, agents have their role. We have our role. We don't cross over theirs and they don't cross over ours, meaning their role is to market and sell. We don't market and sell properties. We're not, we're not agents. We don't do that. We're not you know, we don't have the expertise or the skills and we're not licensed to do that. Um, our job is to provide legal advice, draft conditions because we know how to draft them so they can create certainty and 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 they don't create ambiguity and that's the whole point parties come together and they know what they've agreed to and they know what the outcome uh, most likely will be down the track that's the whole point so this is a real mess we're trying to unravel it maybe by next week i'll have the um i'll yep, let you know nice. what the outcome is yeah <laughs> Well, let's cross our fingers, huh? Hopefully yeah. um, you're celebrating and not tearing your hair out anymore. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, thing. Well, thank you so much, Despina. If anyone does want to get in touch with you directly, where can they go? So they can phone the office, double five two nine one two nine four, and they can email us at info at prealatlegal.com.au or, as Mike has done recently, reached out on Facebook on the uh, community page and said, hey, what about this? Can we talk about this on the show? So uh, we'll be doing that next week, Mike. But, yeah, feel free to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Justina and Wayne. And we'll do it all again next week. <laughs> See you then, guys. Are you confused about legal jargon? Do you need legal advice but don't know where to turn? Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97. Despina, a leading lawyer with over 20 years of experience, will demystify the law and provide practical advice to help you navigate legal issues. Whether it's a family matter, a property dispute, or a business concern, Talking Law has got you covered. Don't miss out on this valuable resource. Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97.